part is not a means. It is an end. You understood the reality of the past and of the present, Winston. Now, what of the future? The question, how does one man assert power over another? Making him suffer. Exactly. Obedience is not enough. Power is inflicting pain and humiliation, otherwise you cannot be sure. Power is tearing human minds apart and putting them together again in new shapes of your own choosing. Power is not a means. It is an end. In our world, there will only be triumph and self-abasement. Everything else we shall destroy. The past is forbidden. Why? Because when we can cut man from his own past, then we can cut him from his family. His children, other men. There is no loyalty except loyalty to the party. There is no love except love of big brother. All competing pleasures we will destroy. If you want a vision of the future, Winston, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. For if leisure and security were enjoyed by all alike, the great masses of human beings who are normally stupefied by poverty would come to become, would become literate and would learn to think for themselves. And then once they had done this, they would, realize, they would sooner or later realize that the privileged minority had no function and that they would be swept away. In the long run, a hierarchical society is only possible on the basis of poverty and ignorance. Ignorance is strength. At least it is for the elite. And that was George Orwell. And that previous clip was from 1984. <clears throat> and in the general hardening of, of the outlook that set in, practices which had been long abandoned, imprisonment without trial, the use of war prisoners as slaves, public executions, torture to extract confessions, the use of hostages and deportations of whole populations not only became common again, but were tolerated and even defended by people who considered themselves enlightened and progressive. George Orwell There are four ways the elite are overthrown. One is from an external power. Two is a revolt by the lower classes. Three, an overthrow by the middle class. Or four, decay and corruption of the upper class. If one is able to control, create and control threats, no one power can overcome the defenses of another power. If you keep the lower classes ignorant and not let them have any possibility of a better life, they will never revolt. For the middle class, constant surveillance and appropriate rewards and punishments keep them in line. For the elite, they seek to perpetuate the class not by bloodlines, but who does not rule does not matter so long as the structure remains the same. All past oligarchies have fallen from power either because they ossified or because they grew soft. Either they become stupid and arrogant and failed to adjust themselves to changing circumstances and were overthrown, or they became liberal and cowardly and made concessions when they should have used force. And once again they were overthrown. This is the, the elder generation, the younger generation of the Rockefellers. I, I've one of the points I keep making is that the elder generations of of the elite were truly genius men who did a lot of incredible hard lifting and, and a lot of deep thought to, to bring their schemes about and, and uh, consolidate their power. 
and I believe that the younger generations, the second and third generations that fall behind it, the baby boomers and the Generation X elite, lack the intelligence, the skill, the acumen to, to pull off keeping the empire together, much less building one. Orwell sensed that the masses would never really revolt and that ho humanity's only hope was through cor corruption within the party. In 1984, Oceania represented the Anglo-American Empire. Eurasia represented the Russian-dominated Europe and the Middle East. And East Asia represented China, Japan, and other Asian countries. The Trilateral Commission tries to replicate these three with the Anglos, the Euros, and the Japanese. War between these three powers were not to conquer but maintain control over one's own population through sacrifice and intimidation. So in 1984 these three powers were constantly fighting against each other and these powers were never to conquer and, and overtake the other, other one because they couldn't. Even if two of the powers got together they wouldn't be able to overcome the defenses of the um, of the one nation and that all these politics and all these wars were not necessarily to gain a strategic advantage over the other three power or the two powers but really was there for the elite to enslave the population and keep them on edge it keeps war keeps the economy pumping for the elite without raising the standard of living excess capacity is deliberately wasted and hatred is directed towards at an enemy and anything else but the elite this forces society towards basic needs and not higher learning. In this process, society and the family structure is destroyed. They severed the links between parent and child. In 1984, they, they, uh, the children formed like a, a Boy Scout squad of snitches and they were constantly uh, turning in their parents for uh, breaking the laws. They severed the links between man and man because of this police state where everybody was ratting each other out you couldn't trust anybody because there was appropriate rewards for those who did participate in this in the system by turning in their fellow citizens and there was extreme punishment for those who went against it they even severed the link between man and woman love was forbidden that that uh, carnal desire of, of procreating and, and loving a, a man and woman was outlawed there would be no friends no partners no lovers no art, no literature, nor science. And if you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever.